Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 73, July 14th, 2015. Uh, here we are, rolling through. This meeting is going to be a little bit more exciting than our average meeting. We're not just doing bugs. We've got something exciting planned, which I'll cover the agenda. As always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't here with us right now or are watching this video later. I think we'll probably post this around a little bit and because it has an exciting thing in it that maybe we'll get a few more views on this video than the average. Hey, look, we covered bugs. On to that exciting agenda I'm talking about. One, we will do triage. We'll get the bugs out of the way. We have a bunch of new bugs, which will be good to cover. And then went out and found someone to do us a new logo proposals, just kind of seeing what we could uh, get, see what we, kind of stuff we would see when we got it back. And while I want to kind of run it by you guys, see what you think, um, some, some of the guidelines that we put forth and things like that. So anyway, that'll be a fun thing we'll do after triage. And then as always, we'll cover anything that wasn't covered in the agenda that we want to get back to. So before we go do the fun stuff, let's go do the important stuff, namely checking out those bugs. You ready, Bob? I am ready. All right, here we go. Seven bugs, which is, you know, kind of interesting, but it's, I guess it's all from, oh, wow, two of them from today. And, yeah, look, More than bugs. half features, so. All right, I'm okay with that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Webder does not allow configuring forms authentication. Okay. Probably could do that. Not in Wix 3.8. Sounds additive. Probably could be done in Wix 3.x. All right, sounds good. Unless something comes to this day. No, 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 you can't. Oh, of course, I've lost my mouse. All right, here we go. Wix 3.9 compatibility issue. What? Merge conflict. What? Oh, if I create a project with down there Wix 3.5, they're using Orca to do? Oh, wow. That's, or that's early functionality that's in Orca. And you're getting merge conflicts on the validation category three five to three nine. I don't. What 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 is this? Orca, Orca has command line switches. Who yes, knew? it does. Orca has command line switches that you can use to merge merge modules because there was no merge module tool way back when. Right. Um, so this isn't. They they keep saying unzip, but this is they're trying to manually merge a merge module. Yeah, they're well, they're merging a merge module in the way that they know how. In Orca. I understand. I'm just I'm confused because of the different switches and the references to unzipping. The uh, the reference to unzipping is not right, but you can tell Orca to extract all the files to it. Hook it up to the uh, um, hook it up to hook the merge module into your MSI and then spit out all of the files into a directory so that you could then go figure out how to go put uh, the files in whatever you want to. I mean, you're basically doing a lot of work yourself instead of using the Wix tool set. And I don't know if the spec calls this out. If it didn't, it should. But validation merge conflicts are ignorable. So it shouldn't be an error. It should be a warning at best. And we're probably using the latest validation category after 3.5 to 3.9, somewhere along the time we went along and said, cool, let's add uh, all of the categories that the Windows installer supports. Uh, so what is, I don't find validation category anywhere in the source. Is that? It turns generated? into tables. Tables.xml has it. The column definition for category has a set that is text formatted, template, condition, GUID, path, version, language, yada, 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 yada. I'm sure something was added. Oh, formatted SDDL text. How much you want to make a bet that that's the one, right? That was the last category that was added in some version of the Windows installer, probably five. Right, um, that's when they added the... Log permissions EX. Yeah, yeah. And so they added the formatted SDDL text. So your validation column category now has an extra piece in it. And they basically need to get an updated validation table, or they can just ignore this warning. And this is coming from an old version of Orca. Could be. I don't know if there's a newer version in Orca 3.1. I don't no, know if there's an Orca 4.0. If it's literally Orca 3.1, I mean, it, it's versioned after the uh, Windows SDK version that it ships in. Yeah, then good. So, so then there should be somewhere out there an Orca 5, whatever it would be, right? MSI 5? Anyway, so yeah, they need to go fix This is not our bug. Agreed. I'm not even sure that Orca, Orca 5 is going to have a fix for this, though, because, like, 
this functionality is ancient. So, anyway, right. it's not it's in the end. This is what we're supposed to do. You're supposed to ignore these warnings and things like that. Uh, okay. So, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff that basically is not our problem. Add preprocessor variable with, with Wix version. Um, okay, I guess. I don't know. Not excited about the preprocessor having a lot more stuff, but I suppose you could put a nicer error message on things and stuff with it, so. I suppose. Yes? No? Bob, you're kind of ambivalent, I take it. Yes. I have no comment. Well, he said he's willing to do the PR, so, I mean, we could toss in 3X, and if he wants to do it, then we could do it. Probably. We need to have that discussion, but yes. They can, and then, I don't know, what the in the PR probably talk about, I don't know, what names do we want to use? I mean, are those names good enough? Yeah, do we want to whip for this? Yeah, ideally. So, I mean, uh, that or the doc has to be updated. I don't know. Well, yeah, doc definitely has to be updated. I, I'm just, uh, I'm not seeing what, I, I'd, I'd say a whip because this is, you know, the the underbelly of the core, but I'm not sure what a whip would say beyond what's here. Yeah. Except I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to come up with a, a reason for this. Conditionally include and exclude code based on the Wix toolset version. Interesting. I guess if we have stuff, what you have, you add new stuff that old Wix doesn't understand, and you haven't upgraded everywhere. Okay. Yes, but if defs make me sad. Yes. I mean, there's the, I don't know if we still have it. Do we still have the... Um, required? Required version of Wix toolset? Yeah. But it's at a, you know, section level. It's at a file level, right? Or is it... Um, that's a good question. I don't remember. I, I, I want to say section, but it might be file. Oh, because it's, yeah, it's in the Wix element, isn't it? I thought that it was on the Wix element, which means it would yeah, apply to that whole is. file. Right, right, so it is. if you brought the file in, you could, I mean... Well, the question is, do we want this with more ability to do if defs? I really waffle about it. Really, I kind of, this, I'm, the more I think about this scenario, though, the, the worse it gets, though, right? Like, you now have a machine that's building against Wix, you know. The code it's building against is, you know, for 3.10, and it won't build on 3.9 for whatever reason. So the 3.9 build machine works, but fail, but is missing stuff. Right? I suppose... Oh, God. I mean, I suppose, but then you're talking, I mean, to make it functional, you're talking, you know, else's as well. I don't... Something. Yeah, I don't, I don't... I don't really get that. Um... Let's push back on that. I'm I'm not sold. Like the the there's a whole lot, like the the attribute on the Wix element. I think is a better way to solve this kind of thing. Push the stuff that requires Wix 3.10 in there, and then do your com conditional compile in that way, which is a whole lot more work. But at a certain level, turning stuff on and off based off Wix version that sounds kind of sketchy too. Yeah, I I agree with that. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you can say this is well. This is C++ lets you do this, 
And it does. Uh, but... Yeah, I just... Yeah. Wix already has something that works for the most part, and I'm, I'm concerned if... Um, I, I don't like the idea that you have like you know blocks of authoring that that are you know different just because of the Wix version in use. Yeah, that seems that, that just weird. doesn't that just doesn't. I can't get use cases for that. More if it was in the compiled OBJ file or something like that. But yeah, that's okay. yeah, which there isn't any of that at all. Right, and I think it just it you know the deal with it at a at a module level and. Which supports that. Yep. All right. So we've all gone around. I think that's it. So yeah, no, let's not do that one. Unless they really come back with a better scenario or something that we've missed in that. I like the other one better. Okay. Ability to install. <sighs> yeah, ability to install previews without adding entry and ARP. Well, if I didn't know what this thread was about, I'd say no. Right. But this is. There's more. To, I really don't like the. the Okay, it's fine. This is the correct thing. There's a whole. This is a ginormous feature that maybe the guy will come back for to do. So right. let's just put it in 3x, and we'll wait a little bit, and we'll talk about all the different parts that have to be implemented to make this work correctly. Yeah, so I don't think this likely ends up in 3x, personally. That's fine too, but let's. Let's put it there until we see the the um, whip. Okay, works for me. I, I haven't. Let me put it this way: I haven't come up with anything in my head that said if someone wanted to do this, that I haven't come up with anything that prevents it from working in three X. But that's not to say that something else won't come up. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not a question of whether something's possible. Uh, well, it is. I mean, in a backwards compatibility way. Compatible way. I don't that's, I find anything that prevents it from working a backwards compatible way. Maybe. Yes. So, we'll see. Um, canceling an. Hello? Uninstall process at a certain time once the MSI install your ICO. So, this one actually worried me at one point. So, I dug into it. And the root issue, which is actually called out. Here's that they're showing they're doing display UI of their MSI, display internal UI of the MSI. Mm -hmm. So when Burn does a rollback um, and it tries to go, oh, I need to install this MSI again for rollback purposes, the it doesn't install, oh. but it follows the display internal UI rather than not. Excellent, excellent. So you could say that during rollback, we should ignore display internal UI, except then you're going to hit the case of, well, I can't install unless the user chooses a bunch of things in my internal UI, which basically turns into don't display internal UI. Yes. Excellent advice. So I, I, I think this is a four bug if we take it. Um, so I'm inclined to put it in four suspended. And it doesn't somehow lose the quiet flag. It's the uh, uninstall doesn't have a non quiet version and yeah, I guess that's the one I'm I'm kinda concerned about. I mean there is a bug here that that the rollback install triggers full UI. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think. <laughs> Though you could probably convince me otherwise. I mean, clearly the behavior is really, really weird. Yep. But that is display internal UI. So yes. All right, um, so you're saying you want to suspend it in four. Yeah. I mean... Sus suspend it as in this is display internal UI and we can't right. really fix it? Okay. Well, no, I mean, 
someone really wanted to fix it, they could go start digging into it. But basically, the answer is try not to do that. And I don't think we can change this in three because you may be dependent on it. You may be dependent on showing the UI during rollback or during, sorry, during any install operation of NMSI. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. So if we put it in four, then we could say, yeah, we never show it backwards, so you have to make sure that any properties you need, you have to pass them in. All right? And not dependent on your, not be dependent on your UI showing to get input or whatever. How do we enforce that? Well. Or is it policy? <laughs> Yeah, it'll be policy. It'll be like okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> it's display internal UI. There's so many things we don't can't enforce. It's just right. It's not good all the way around. I agree. Okay, that works for me. Certificate bridging not working. Bridging. Oh, this is like a refreshing. Yeah, it's uh, expiring certificates doesn't contain the old certificate and the patch certificate element. Is it being filtered out? No, they're using PCP. Oh. Oh, yeah, patch creation, not patch. Okay. Yeah, I don't know enough about most of these things. <laughs> I mean, PCP alone kind of like puts it out of my realm of, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's part of it. All this stuff is just, uh, you know, <laughs> rows and tables. And PCP so, means it's not anything to do with how Wix builds patches. So, um it's, it doesn't seem that it's likely a bug in Wix. I don't know how it could be a bug in Wix. Unless we're creating the PCP wrong. Again, rows and tables. I mean, if Wix got that wrong, well, in general, things would be pretty bad. Well, yeah, I'm, yeah like I said, I, I, I don't do enough with the PCP, the patch creation stuff to know. Like, oh, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I've used it. It's just, I mean, it's just another database. There's no right, right, right. Like I said, I don't know if we're, like, dropping stuff out of a data. We're missing something in the certificate table or something for PCP. I haven't tested it. Basically, I, I sorry, I should back up. I really don't know. <laughs> so the problem is that he can get a patch created with one tool that does the right thing, and he can't get it built with the way tool set doing this. So at this point, it's like, Something's wrong, and it's either in the way the Wix is creating the patch creation, or it's in the patch creation tool from the Windows installer team. Right? I, well, I don't know because I don't know how the other tool builds patches. I don't either. Is it building a PCP under the hood? And I have to assume that. Oh wait, you know, I s okay. So he's pointing out that when I create a new patch, the same approach described above, it doesn't contain the old certificate and the past certificate element, and is signed by the new certificate that's added previously. It elevated as an admin. So I think this might be a bug in how Wix. What conjecture? Um, let's resolve this as go get help on Wix users and we need more log files and stuff like that. And maybe it will come back and actually being a bug, but there's no detail in here to suggest that it's a Wix bug, other than he doesn't know how to make it work here. Okay. This, this, so I think this might be a bug. Doesn't give me nothing. Maybe it is, 
but let's go have a discussion about that somewhere else, not in this bug, to go figure out whether this is a bug or not. And if it is, then we can come back here and say, this is what's going wrong. But these are not the best forums to have conversations in, especially since we end up doing it on triage. Right. Add trace logging capability to .NET tools in the WIST toolchain. Trace logging. Okay. This is like turning on ETW everywhere. It's like, yeah, okay. .NET tracing is enabled when if they have a debug or trace are defined in the build. Well, trace is defined all the time, so that doesn't mean anything. Hey, John, this is you up in this. Oh, um, hey. Yeah. What What are you thinking of of tracing over and above, say, verbose logging? I mean, because we don't have many verbose messages today, so I don't know what we get out of um, out of tracing without a lot more. I guess a lot more stuff put into. Uh, I don't know, figuring out where we, where additional data is necessary, I guess. Yeah, so, I mean, with ETW and things like that, I've seen that you can get your your log messages interleaved with, like, XPerf info, so you can start seeing, start tracking down, like, file perf things. You can see, oh, look, the disk was changing a lot. Oh, look, we were doing this. Therefore, our disk I.O. and our calls to these things are aligned and stuff like that. I mean, you can do interesting things like that. Is, is sorry, I, I don't know anything. Mostly about exceptions and okay. So e tracing is not should not be used for exceptions and h results. Like exceptions and h results should come back out to like console as errors. Okay, sorry, I, I don't know. Is is this .NET aspect? Is this CTW? Doesn't .NET tracing underneath is all? I, I'm asking. I don't know. That's my understanding. Is that the .NET tracing stuff underneath is all ETW in the end? Okay. I, my, I guess I, I thought that's what it was for. I mean, it makes sense. I just I wasn't. System wasn't sure. di diagnostics. I don't understand. All right, I don't. So I don't. I don't know what we would do with a different logging. So maybe the title just needs, all right, I don't. <laughs> I mean, the, the perf stuff sounds interesting, but I know I know from ETW work that, you know, it, it's, it's mostly about how you instrument. You know, you have to add the right thing. You have to make sure that you can correlate. So we're not talking about ETW, then I don't know what, this would, what is this then? If this isn't the ETW with the correlation and all that kind of stuff, what is this for? To provide logging, debugging, diagnosis, runtime issues with the WIST tool chain. Like, if this is really failures and stuff like that, then we should just spit that out the console. My mouse cursor go. It's so hard to click on anything. No, nope, that's. I can't hit there. John's typing a book, a short book. Okay. Uh, I don't, I just don't understand. All right. Sure. We, we can take a whip and discuss it to the whip if you want. I, we could also, if we have a high view, we could, you know, avoid writing a whip if we're like, no, 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 we don't want that. But I'm, I'm just not clear. Tracing would be off by default. with deploy the ability to trace in the field, right? Yeah. Configured an app config, right? 
but we have the command line switch for verbose logging. So if I mean if it's if it's just for spitting out more stuff to verbose log, we could do that. If it's wiring into like you know more advanced ETW type stuff, then that's a different the level of performance type logging and stuff like that, which could be interesting, but and, you know, I, I guess. Just don't understand. So the ability to add pluggable trace loggers. Well, that I'm not. I mean, I'd rather just. I, I mean, I'd rather say if you want to write pluggable things, then go write MS build pluggable stuff and we'll wire all our messages up there. I'm okay. I'm I don't see what this is for that shouldn't be solved with either writing to the console like we do today to run down errors and things that are busted or writing high performance type stuff which we don't have today which could be interesting if someone wanted to go do the effort and then hopefully would analyze that data to maybe do more perf work. Um, something like that. I'm a little, I don't know. Okay, so so if the question is adding more console logging, we don't need a feature as, like to track that. It could be, I'm going to, know, this is going to be a massive undertaking to be like, look, I found this case. We don't log enough information to diagnose this thing. Go that. Um, you know, like, okay, great, let's go add logging to make it easier to diagnose when those things go wrong. I'm all for that. We should just do that uh, as a matter of course. For example, something that I would wish that I've had for a while is the ability to spit out all of the locations that the bind paths looked for a file if they can't find the file. Like that's one of those things that's like, yeah, it'd be really nice if we did that. But obviously I've never sat down and wrote it myself, so you know, but again now we just go out to logging. Out to the console like we do now. I don't think we need a new logging capability to do that. Yeah, we don't take advantage of verbose messages that we have. Not no. enough. Anyway. Yeah, well and they're they're yeah, a bunch of them are kinda of junk. A number of them are yeah. useful. Like the log the calving one can be useful. Yep. Um my calves don't get big enough anymore, but when they did it could be useful. Yeah. So all right, so I'm gonna say we don't do a new logging system. We stick with the console one we have. Um and we can go from unless you want to talk four O and you want to say let's get rid of the whole message infrastructure because this will work much better. Well, that could be a thing we could talk about, but that would be a different, completely different way of going. I'd like to see whether we're correctly outputting messages uh, so MS build logging levels work. They should like, be. You know. Warnings okay. and errors do. Like, they're showing up correctly with yellow and red and things like that. That's usually an indication. That oh, that's, that's true. That's it's all true. because we spit it out in the correct... Um, uh, format. I was trying to go with the standard logging. I, don't, what, I thought they had a name for it, but I don't know what it is. So I know that they that exists for er errors and warnings. I'm not sure that there's one for verbose. No, there isn't for anything for verbose that I know of. Okay. Well, that might be worth investigating as well. If you can filter uh you know, you have the different logging levels inside MS Build. If our stuff worked with that, however that works, I don't know how to do it necessarily from just, you know, standard out, but um, if that worked, then we could feel free to, you know, dump a lot more verbose messages and, you know, not clog up inappropriately. Right, right, right. All right. So I, I don't know if there's anything to do in three. 
for if there's the desire to change the whole messaging stuff, then that's something. It's a non-trivial amount of work. Um, well, I think there's at least two here. One is what we collect, and then second is how we collect it, I guess. And I guess I would argue that we're not going to change how we collect it in three. No, no. Four, if we're going to do it, we should do it soon, because <laughs> it's going to touch everything, and you know, it's going to be another one of those huge things that will go ripple through everything. So. Right. So. All right. Cool. So confusing that. All right. Bunch of features, and a bug that we don't think a bug. A bug that was a yeah in in order, and then a bug's compatibility shit wasn't bug. So basically, all the bugs we don't think are bugs yet. The canceling and uninstall process four eight two three you could argue is a bug, but it's also behavior in a really fuzzy spot. And then I think all the other features. Yeah, we had one feature is like, yeah, I could do that. The second feature is like, yeah, I shouldn't need to do that. Uh, third feature that was, yeah, that's a really big feature. And the fourth feature was uh, probably not, although reimagining tracing in four certainly is not. Reimagining logging in four is certainly possible. All right. It's not bad. And more importantly, nothing that affects 310. I noticed that. Like, didn't even come close to affecting 310 is a good thing. Yay! It means that 310 still gets to grow along quietly. So, moving on to fun stuff. So, I don't know, a year ago or something, I put out the thought of doing a, you know, Wix logo update. Um, at the time, it was kind of like a, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things going on, whatever. Um, and it kind of sat in the background. But then recently, with all the work uh, we did at Fire Giant around the tutorial and a whole bunch of web stuff on, on our side, we came back with a little bit of extra time um, uh, to go and say, hey, why don't we have one of our designers take a shot at uh, what you know the, a new logo might look like uh, for the Wix tool set. So we called him up and said, so here's our current logo. It served us well for a very long time. Uh, what would a new logo look like if we were to refresh, modernize it? Uh, one of the big important guidelines is to make sure that it would still be recognizable as the Wix toolset, because there are other companies out there that have the word Wix in them. Uh, I'm thinking one is a car filter company, which has nothing to do with us, but it's out there. Um, and another one is a web design company that has their logo. We definitely don't want to get confused with them, because we already get confused with them a little bit as it is, um, both being on the computer. So they came back with uh, three options, uh, two kind of palettes of those options and things for us to get thinking. And so since I got that back uh, last week, I wanted to kind of put it here and get some of, uh, first of all, your impressions, your first impressions, basically things of like, whoa, don't do that, or oh, that thing's freaking awesome, that one's cool. Um, and then any item, ideas you have maybe for refinements, things that you'd like, that's really cool. It'd be cooler if it could do you know, this or that, or I really don't like that facet of that thing, so try to avoid that at all. Um, so we're not looking for, hey, I have a whole new logo. I want to draw that from scratch. If you want to do that, we probably could have done that before. We've had all the last year. But what we're looking for now is kind of your first impressions, kind of go, oh, that one's cool. That's a So I'm expecting people to... Uh, I'm going to go to the next slide, which has the three options that they've kind of put out. They're kind of progressions in different directions, um, plus a couple of different color schemes for them. Um, so kind of look through the color schemes, look at that, and then just type your first impressions, ignoring what everybody else might think to start with. You know, this is purely what you think, and I'm going to start taking notes. I will actually sit very quietly on the next um, page while you guys all take it. So I'm hoping everybody has their keyboard ready to go and start typing. Really, I want to get your first impressions, what you think, because that's you know where a lot of the logo starts. And then after that, after everybody kind of works through their first impressions, what they like, don't like, things like that, maybe something's like, you know, I like this, but if it could be that, it might be cooler, things like that. Um, so Rob, you said you're going to be quiet, but I can root for my favorite. Right? <laughs> uh, Bob has seen this. Um, and no, you get to be quiet too, because really this is All about right. your guys' first impressions, those of you that haven't seen it, and we'll kind of let it roll through uh, again, because yeah. 
you guys have been seeing this logo forever. I know for a lot of us, it's like, yeah, I know this very well. Um, and again, these I want to be very clear within the guidelines. We gave them fairly open guidelines that ended up being fairly restrictive in the end that it, ha it was mostly a refresh and a modernize and still recognize the Wix tool set. So these are not going to be, oh, wow, that's a whole new imagination because we didn't go for that. All right. Are we ready for the next slide? I basically want everybody to type yes or something so that I know you're all ready to type because it literally is going to be what you see. I want you to start typing so that you can go, all right, cool. Here's what I thought when I saw it. Okay. And I don't see anybody typing at this point, so that's got to be some of the worst podcast material right there. Hey, Bob, like complete dead silence for I don't know. I should have timed it. A couple um, minutes, it's fine. Come on. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, so three. A lot of people are also liking three. The red seems to be a uh, pretty popular. Uh, that seems to be pretty consistent. Uh, staying with red, I, I tend to agree with staying with red has kind of been a our our signature maneuver even back when everybody was doing blue um, being red made us different so I, I kind of agree with that so how about refinements, things that people like, don't like things that they like, alright so I like three but I like X from number two or I'd like three if it did something different um, any of that stuff one of the things I'll point out is that three actually has different colors for the X then um, three red has three in the first column has a different color of the X than any other ones. Is that a good or bad thing? Did anybody even notice? Um, is that what makes it good? Um, let's see other things. Um, I like the tricolor. Yeah, I like the the extra there. Um, yeah, it's not an immediately noticeable thing, so I'm okay with that too. Um, I think Bob pointed out somewhere along the line that, you know, kind of does a nice job of starting to highlight that, you know, where are we at with the whole XML and it's just Wix now and things like that. So, um, so John likes the 007 circle on number two. Um, <laughs> Bob, <laughs> Bob did not like that at all. <laughs> I forgot what you called it. it was really it's funny. not appropriate for a recorded <laughs> meeting. 
But yeah, he just had issues with the <laughs> what that <laughs> ended up symbolizing in his head where he went. Um, my issues with two personally were that it was it's really big logo when you get done with it, um, given all the dots and stuff, which makes it very hard to 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 go down uh, to fit essentially. So if you try to take that and put in like a fab icon, it'd be like, oh, that will never happen. Um, not that you could take even number three in a fab icon, but it will fit. Um, yeah, um, you need lots of space for number two. Um, one of the things I don't, nobody mentioned is like the inlining of the letters. Turns out that I, I like that now. I think that's probably more of a modernization thing than anything else. Um, it was kind of, I remember it being kind of cool, the letters being out of um, alignment in the old logo, which you could still see in the top. I was very happy to see that that stayed up there. Um, but it does feel very modern to have all the letters pulled back together in a straight line, um, which I thought was kind of nice, which of course is a consistent theme across all these. So it's like, they're like, yeah, yeah, we're not doing this whole drop letter thing anymore. <laughs> um, subscripts of subscripts or whatever. Or what is that? A, I is a subscript of W, which X is a subscript of I, I don't know, or a superscript of I, or however you want to play that. Um, Too much math. <laughs> uh, w sub I super X, is that how that goes? Anyway, um, one of the things that I'm curious, personally, of a refinement, I'm curious if maybe we can work a couple more colors in, maybe, um, on the red. I'm, the maroon, it's a very maroon red. One of the other things I've been wondering if maybe we can get a little brighter red, but it's a real big question of how that works against white um, and black and gray can be really tricky. Red is actually a really tricky color, um, as we find at Fire Giant all the time. It can run into lots of problems with reds, um, so making sure that it can find um, where it goes. Um, well, that's one advantage of, of having the gray X, yeah. which of course you, you could do in, in one and two as well. Yes, you could. But the the gray X next to the red, I think, sh it shows the red better than uh, number one with both both W and X black. Whereas, yeah. yeah, in the old logo, the red's a lot brighter. Yeah, yeah, it seemed like it's a little bit brighter, and so I I, I feel like I like a brighter red. Um, but again, it's going to be probably one of those things that's going to be. You'll see it, and they'll be like, it could be the designer said, yeah, we gave it a brighter red, and then when you see it, you're like, oh, it was horrible against that black, or white, or whatever. Um, red, black, and white can be really tricky on all of them. Um, and I, I bring this up because when we got the Fire Giant logo, one of the big questions we had was, how is this going to look on white? Because we saw it on black, I think, the first time, or, or yeah, I think it was on black or something. And it was just like, and they had done really nice work with the Fire Giant logo, such that it looks really sharp on either white or black. And so I know that red, and they talked about how the red was kind of challenging to put there. Um, so um, we'll see. Um, so I, I've seen a couple references to being careful about orange. Um, what are people thinking about along the lines of the issues with orange? Um, and not like, I'm just so I'm clear of what we're trying to stay away from. Um, or what the concern is around orange. So my saying is Wix.com is yellow. It's very, very yellow to me, but uh, I totally agree. Like, we certainly don't want it to be more, we certainly want it to be more red than towards yellow. So I guess the orange is the slippery slope heading that way. But yeah, all right. So that's fine. Avoiding the what the other guys use. I want to make sure it doesn't things To the colorblind, sorry. Well, between orange and yellow and red, or normally what I'm being told is that that eye being black may be completely invisible to a colorblind <laughs> as it is, so we may have that. Um, so, orange and yellow, oh yeah, orange and yellow, yeah. So, all right, so uh, this is always fun, seeing new logos, getting ideas, things like that are always kind of fun. Uh, refinements are good, so, we're kind of, it's getting quieter and quieter, so I'm going to move on to questions, comments people want. Um, I'll go to the next slide simply to bring that up, but then I'll, I can come back to the slide if people want to just look at the logos instead of doing that. So anything else out there, stuff? It's been a week. I don't think much has changed. We're still rolling on 310 for a sometime August thing. I'll have see, you know, different suggestions for different holidays that we could do. Um, so, anything else going on people want to talk about? Things to do, stuff that needs to be covered, 
stuff that's out there. An answer to one whip for multiple for the one whip or multiple for the doctor. Nice feature number. I, I don't. I don't know that I care. I mean, I was kind of like for the old doc dumps, I was almost willing to reuse the very early, early numbers or negative numbers maybe, but just give them a feature number and put them up there. It doesn't matter because they've already shipped. So the big thing the feature number does is give us a way to move something along without having to go and remember to update the documentation. So we'll just create it and say it was done in that. Um, so anything else? All right, so 50 minute meeting, a little bit longer than our average bear, but we had a good set of bugs and we had a fun thing to talk about today. Logos, things like that, things where we're going. So, um, all right, I guess on that note, we're gonna call it a day. Until next week, you guys have a good time and uh, I'll see you on uh, Wix Dev later. Bye. Bye.